Did I crush Summerween? Yes. Did Summerween crush me? Yeah. For real, for real, I slumped out so hard. Like, I don't know if you have ever spent every single day vlogging and editing and posting and reading like voraciously for a readathon, but Olivia Rodrigo was right. It's brutal out here. Like, oh my God, it was so hard. And I loved every second of it, but I went into a huge reading slump and literally did not read anything for the rest of, Jul of July. All I did was <sighs> binge watch seven seasons of The Vampire Diaries. Yeah, I watched seven seasons of Vampire Diaries in like two and a half weeks. Is it embarrassing or impressive? I don't know. But before we jump into the rest of this video, I am going to take a moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is, as always, as of now, Book of the Month. I'm sure you all already know about Book of the Month, unless you've been living under a literal rock for the last five years. But just in case I'm the one that gets to enlighten you, Book of the Month is a monthly book subscription service where their team goes through hundreds and hundreds of new releases each month, and they curate a list of five books that they think you should have your eye on for you to choose from so you can do less time researching and more time reading. Not only is Book of the Month completely risk-free, you can skip any month with no fee, but it's also the absolute lowest price for new release hardcover fiction. If you would like, you could get your first book for $9.99 using the code Katie and using the link in my description down below for your Book of the Month subscription. Now I'm going to show you the five books that Book of the Month so kindly sent to me for the month of August. The first book is Damnation Spring by debut author Ash Davidson. This is a literary fiction telling a moving portrait of a family struggling to make ends meet in a logging town divided over the fate of its forest. The Inheritance of Arcadia Divina by Zoraida Cordova is a super early release. This doesn't come out until September 7th. This is a fantasy novel where at the funeral of their matriarch, the Montoyos receive a powerful and magical inheritance, but with great riches come great enemies. Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey is a contemporary fiction set in Scotland where a farmer is found dead and the town blames a pack of wolves. N.T., however, refuses to believe this. But if the wolves didn't do it, who did? Could it be the man N.T. is falling in love with? Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lupina is a twisted domestic thriller of a wealthy family unraveling after their parents are murdered. They try to pin blame on strangers because, after all, if one of your siblings were a psychopath, you'd know, wouldn't you? The last book is also a very early release. The publication date is August 31st, and that is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. After a long string of one-night stands with the most unacceptable men she can find, Anna's son discovers tattooed motorcycle riding Quan and has to admit to herself that being with him isn't just about sex. Once again, thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video, and my link is down in the description below. Back to your regularly scheduled Katie programming, we're going to break this video into three parts just to make it more fun and exciting for me so that I have motivation to film and to read. And I'm telling you right now that these descriptions of these books might be a little hit or miss because I didn't really want to bog myself down with like researching the books like I usually do every month because I really, really wanted to make this video like a little bit more exciting, a little bit less work for me. So sorry if I get a couple facts here and there wrong. But like, honestly, nobody came to this channel to get fact checked. Like, do you see this face? <laughs> do I look like I exactly know what I'm talking about? No. But the three segments of this video are going to be books that are a rollover from last month uh, that I didn't get to, books that I maybe, I think there's only one that I newly want to read for this month. And then the third one, which I'm very excited about, is I asked Grace, what I did was I sent her a kind of panning video of my TBR shelf slowly and said, hey, would you mind if you would look this over and tell me the three books that you're really wanting me to read? Because my best friend Grace, ha if, you ha if you don't know who she is, like, hello, like she's literally the star of this channel. Um, quote from Olivia Reads a Latte. She was like, <laughs> she literally sent me a message and was like, oh yeah, uh, or no, she, she was like, oh yeah, Katie from Katie Coulson, but the real star of the channel, Grace. I'm like, facts. Anyway, Grace has been really, really like obsessively listening to audiobooks as well. She's really gotten into it, been reading a lot, like ebooks, physical books, audiobooks, everything. So I'm like, I'm really interested to see what she wants me to read because she's been more in the book community and she has more of an eye out for people's opinions and what they say about them and their summaries and everything. So I really wanted to see what she would say. 
So I asked her to send me a video telling me three books on my shelf that she wants me to read and maybe a reason behind why she wants me to read them. I have one suspicion of one of the books that she wants me to read and then I have one fear but also excitement of a book that I think she's going to say. I don't know. We'll see, but that's going to be in the end. The first thing we're going to do is talk about the books that are carrying over from July's TBR. First of which being They Never Learn by Lane Fargo, or is it Laney Fargo? I've heard it both ways. Who knows? Love this cover though, girl. Um, this is one that I had been planning on reading for Summerween, and then we ended up listening to Survive the Night by Riley Sager, which was horrible. It was horrible. Sorry, I like Riley Sager, but that book was bad. Also, I'm sorry, it is like storming outside. So if you can hear that, my bad. But this book, um, this is a mystery thriller about Scarlett Clark, if I'm remembering. Yes, Katie. Amazing. Okay, so Scarlett Clark is an English professor. And the only thing better than, the only thing that she's better at than teaching is getting away with murder. I mean, honestly, you already had me at the tagline. You literally already had me. But this is supposed to be kind of similar to, like, A Promising Young Woman with, like, Carrie Mulligan. And I, Grace and I were really wanting to watch that movie. And this is the one that I think she's going to say. Because I think that she wants to read this, too. But anyway, this is supposed to be about this girl, uh, this woman, Scarlett Clark, who works at this uh, university. And every year she picks out, like, the worst man that the university has to offer, like, a date raper like uh, like drugs girls something just like a terrible guy and then she kills him but i guess she's been doing it for so long that she gets sloppy and now she's at a risk for getting found out and exposed and then i think there's like a girl that's going to the university that like maybe accidentally finds out but i think they team up i don't know but i am like so so pumped to read this book Another carryover from July is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Now, not to spoil anything, but I did in fact read Beach Read in July, but that video is not going to be coming out for a hot minute because I want to include People We Meet on Vacation in that video. But this is um, also a book by the same author and it is a romance and it's also following... Well, no, Beach Read is like kind of like... It's like rivals to lovers and People We Meet on Vacation is like friends to fall out to friends to lovers I believe so it's these two friends best friends that have been um best friends for like a really long time and every year they go on a vacation together and I believe their names are Poppy and Alex wow I am crushing this video so far Katie oh my god I, I never remember characters names I'm so impressed with myself anyway so um they had a falling out and they haven't talked to each other I believe in two years but Poppy is like listen I need to make a last ditch effort to win this friendship back I just miss him so much I want to see if I can mend things I think it said that it was her fault what happened don't quote me on that. Anyway, so she asks Alex, she's like, ring, hey buddy, I mean ex-buddy, uh, remember how I like totally effed everything up? Do you remember that? <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. Um, well, do you want to go on another vacation with me? All expense paid to the Bermuda Triangle. I'm just kidding. I have no idea where they go. Um, and, and then Alex, shockingly, is like, you know what, girl? Sure. Let's do this thing. But promise you won't fall in love with me. I'm making all of this up. But he agrees to go. So they go on a vacation together. And I'm going to make a wild stab in the dark assumption that romance occurs. How did I not get to this one in July? How? This is when you know a reading slump is bad. I couldn't even finish this. Excuse me? Fences? Fence? Fence? Yeah, volume one. Johanna the Mad? Is that a real name? I love that. Um, I'm obsessed with this cover. I think it's absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. This is about um, these guys and they fence and it's gay. Yeah, it is. Hey, um, I've heard really good things about it. And some lovely person, who is it? D Desiree, um, aka Libri Labra from Instagram. She sent this to me and she wanted me to read it, said it's really good. I'm very much looking forward to it. And I swear to God, if I cannot finish this in August, there is something wrong with me. Funny enough, the next one not only is a carryover from July, but then also in July, I ended up getting it as book mail from a lovely girl, Melina, and it is The Gilded Wolves by Rashi Chokshi. I can't stop staring at this book. Like, 
I, you're probably being freaking blinded right now. Like, are you? Like, it's so reflective. It's so stunning. And it's embossed. My favorite color is green. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. It's, like, truly, it's stunning. And then the inside, like, oh, my God, the freaking purple. It's so... Ah, it's so beautiful. Like, I'm, I'm truly... I'm wrecked. I think that my Libby, I had said in July that I had a Libby hold for this and Ace of Spades, and they have both since run out. I think this one has like two days left, and I don't think that's going to happen. It's not going to happen, but I want to read this this month. I am thinking about reading it physically and not reading it um, or listening to it on audiobook because I have heard that this book is so, so good, and I've heard like a couple different people tell me that they think I am going to love it, like personally that I will love it because I love Six of Crows so much, and I love a Kaz and Inej like relationship so much. Like They're like one of my absolute OTPs in books. And I heard from Olivia specifically that this is like if Six of Crows was more adult and Kaz and Inej could touch each other. And I was like, girl, stop talking, please. Also, hilariously, Melina said that she found my channel through Olivia, which is so cute. I love that. I love Olivia. So I really, really, really want to read this because the third book is coming out in September so excited. Um, not a huge fan of the cover of the second one, which is like Silvered Serpents or something. I have no idea. Nobody asked about that. So this book has a kind of similar vibe to Six of Crows, where it's about this kind of like, I was about to say barrel boss, but that's Kaz. Like this guy that slums it, but knows how to get shit done named Severin. And there's these people like this elite group of people that task him to go find an artifact. So I'm trying to remember my summary from last month. They, ta it's the, the Babel is the name of the group, task him to go find this artifact and, for like a bunch of money or something. And then he, or, or wait, is he going to be free? I don't know. He's going to win like his independence or something. You're on this journey with me. We're on this journey together. Anyway, um, he has to get this group of like dangerous experts together to do this like heist to find and take this artifact. And listen, I'm so excited. Like I know that was such a crazy trip to get to the summary of this book, but like everybody loves it. I don't think I've ever heard anybody give this like below a three star. And in Goodreads and BookTube, I feel like that's pretty freaking high praise and I need to get on it. So those were all the books that were a spillover from July. And then now we're into our second segment of this video, which is books that I newly have discovered, newly released, just books that have come into my life that I'm like, I really want to read that this month. There's only two of them. The first one being Crying in H Mart. Listen, I don't even know the author's name. I know the cover vividly because it's so beautiful and I'm obsessed. I believe it's called Crying in H Mart. I'm not sure, but a coworker of mine came up to me. Like she's someone who does like the marketing and she's never in the building. And she came by specifically to tell me to read this book. And it's just because she sees me talk about books on my Instagram. And she came by and she was like, listen to me, read this book. It's phenomenal. I was like, okay, what? And then I happened to see it on like two or three different booktubers, um, vlogs and them crying, reading it, saying it's just absolutely stunning. And I believe that it is about a girl who has, is losing her mother to cancer, I believe, or has just lost her mother to cancer and is kind of going through her grief and her experience, like losing her mom and like just the whole process. And I've heard that it is heart wrenching. It is absolutely gut wrenching, pulls your heart out, stomps it on the floor in such a beautifully poetic way. And listen, like we love to feel things in books. Okay. And I definitely cry reading books. So I'm sure this one is going to hit me where it hurts. And the other book that I really want to pick up is The Final Girl Support Troop by, I keep saying troop, Katie, The Final Girls Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I have read all of Grady Hendrix's books thus far, except for Paperbacks from Hell, which is like a short story collective. I think it's like articles even, not totally sure. I do own that book, but I haven't read it yet. But as far as novels go, this will be the book, uh, the only one of his that I haven't read so far. And I am doing a Grady Hendrix reading vlog of reading all of his books. And I have already finished all the other ones except for this. So this did just release like a week ago, I want to say. And I love Grady Hendrix. I love him. I, even though there's some of his books that I give 
I think like objectively it's a three star. I give it four stars because it's so much fun and so witty and creative. So I'm really hoping for good things from this because I'm obsessed with this book cover, like obsessed with this book cover. I'm not sure if I should listen to it on audio because I was gifted the audio. Like, thank you so much to the person who did that. Um, but then I also saw the physical book at Half Price Books and it has a lot of multimedia kind of elements in it, which I love. And Grady Hendrix, like, like say a Southern Book Club's Guide to Saying Vampires, I would say go with the audio because the multimedia, like there's no multimedia elements, like there's artistic elements to it, but it's not enough to make you read the physical book. But then like Horror Store, I would say absolutely read the physical book instead of the audio. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I'm not like a thousand percent sure about what this book is about other than it is about these uh, group of like, I think they're like 40s to 50 year old women who have this like therapy circle that they go to every month where each of them was a final girl. So what's interesting is that it's not just the final girl, like how final girls was in Riley Sager's book. It's not just the last person that survives a mass murder, like this homicide serial killer thing. It's not just something of like, the person that survives a slasher, it has to be that you also killed the murderer. So you could be the only person that survives, but that doesn't make you a final girl. The final girl becomes a final girl if she kills the killer. So fascinating. I was like, I love that. But apparently they're all in this group and then one of them ends up dead. And I guess you're trying to figure out like if someone's targeting them, what's going on? I don't know. But I know that like Entertainment Weekly or something said that it was like, the perfect summer slasher. And here's hoping that they're right. So those are all the books that I planned on reading for the month of August, but now we're gonna roll into a live reaction of me watching the video of Grace telling me what books I will be reading for August, and I'm holding myself accountable. I'm telling you, you're hearing me say this, that these three books I will absolutely read no matter what, and I'm so excited to see what she's gonna say. Okay, so the first book, that I was like, hands down, this one has to go on the list. I'm dying to know if it's good. Maybe it has learn. over 4.5 stars on they never and Barnes and Noble, and it has over 4.8. I feel like she's gonna pick. They never learn. I think, but it's Gideon the Night. Oh, and I'm like, I'm dying to know if it's good. It has the craziest, like, wildest concept, but people are oh, rating it yes. really, really well. So if it's good, I will also read that one too. But I'm just curious. You have to read that one. Um, and then the next one was They Never Learn. I want to know if that one's good too. That one also had, I think, 4.5 stars. It was definitely over four stars on Goodreads and Barnes and & Noble. And the concept seemed interesting to me. It was like similar to um, that movie with Carrie Mulligan. Can't remember the name of it right now. A Promising Young Woman. I heard the movie wasn't good, but I remember seeing the preview and being like, that concept sounds so interesting. So if the book did it well, I really want to know. And if it's good, I will also read that one. And then I had a hard time picking the last book. I was between two for the last one. And I think what I ended up eventually settling on was Ace of Spades because I remember when you got that one or when we were reorganizing your bookshelf and that one was just not vibing with the color of the rest of your books. And I read the, um, like the synopsis on the back and it sounded really interesting to me too. I don't know why. To me, it just seemed like it would be like fun. It kind of has like a boarding school kind of vibe, which is really, it, that's like always fun for me to read about ever since my Harry Potter days, you know what I mean? And then there's like a little mystery and a little like sinister kind of thing. I don't know, it seemed interesting to me. So um, if you want, I can tell you what the other one was just in case you're like, yeah, I wasn't planning on reading Ace of Spades. The other one that I was debating between was Misery by Stephen King. So do with that what you will. Love you. Are you kidding? Grace, you, you nailed it. You nailed it. Oh my God. I am so beyond excited to read all of these. I was kind of worried that she was going to pick something that I maybe just wasn't in the mood for right now, but I am equally as excited to read all three of these. These are things that I actually like I think I forgot to put this on my TBR. This was one of the ones that I was newly excited about because I just bought this like two weeks ago and have really been wanting to read it. And then I um, recently got the audio for this. 
I can't believe I forgot to put this earlier in the video. Oh my god, I definitely thought that she was going to mention They Never Learn by Lane Fargo, but I also really thought she was going to say The Prior of the Orange Tree. I don't know why, but I was like, she's really going to hit me with the biggest book on my shelf, isn't she? Which would have been totally fine, but I was a little bit scared. But anyway, I already told you what They Never Learn is about. So let's see. Gideon the Ninth by Tasman Muir. This cover is so, st all of these covers are stunning. Like I'm obsessed with all of them, but this, I believe there's a third book that's going to be coming out. Hero the Ninth, I think came out last year, but this is supposed to be about Gideon and Hero and they are like frenemies. I think they've known each other their whole life and now they're like nemesis. I'm really struggling to remember. I believe that what it is, is that Gideon is trying to escape this planet and to escape this planet and this curse, I think, that she has on her, she has to use a sword. Or no, no. Harrow has to use the sword. And Gideon ran away with it. And now Harrow is trying to find Gideon. I was doing really well with these summaries until now. Oh my god. Let's move on. Okay. Ace of Spades. Look at this. Stunner. Stunner. This is supposed to be if Get Out and Gossip Girl had a baby and like, listen, stop talking. I'm already reading it. Like, stop talking. I'm already reading it. I'm obsessed. Okay. So this is supposed to be about um, these two students who get accepted into to be like prefects in this like really elite boarding school, but they are the only two black students there. And all of a sudden, this uh, person that calls themselves aces starts spreading rumors and, um, well, start spreading rumors are that are secrets about these two characters that somehow turn out to be deadly and I guess it's a like gossip girl that way where they're like spreading rumors like sending all these like texts and messages to the whole boarding school and these two characters are like what's up and I think it, it really heavily um I flipped to um a certain page whenever I was in the bookstore picking this up and um one it was the guy character talking to the girl character I think saying you seriously think this isn't about racism? They're targeting two students and they're the only two black students in the school. And I was like, I'm buying this. I literally just like flapped it, like flipped it shut and was like, purchase, bye-bye. That's so good. I am so obsessed. I've heard so many people giving this like astonishing five out of five stars. And I am so, so excited to not only read this book, but to read all three of them. Grace, you freaking knocked it out of the park. So that is going to conclude all the books that I am planning on reading in August and I am really hoping that I can make the final stretch of the climb out of this reading slump. I am working my hardest and I'm really really excited that this video has really excited me and inspired me to read. So I am really, oof, I'm kind of thinking that I might go see what audiobook I want to pick up next. Oh, I'm so happy that this has like motivated me. Okay, so hopefully I'll be reading all those books in August. Let me know which of the books that I mentioned that you really, really want me to prioritize. And if you want me to do a whole video solely based on the three books that Grace picked out for me, I think that'll be a fun video idea. If you've got this far into the video, leave the spade emoji for Ace of Spades. I think that would be cute. And if you want to follow me on Goodreads or Instagram, they are going to be linked down below in the description. If you want to subscribe to this channel, that would be even more amazing. And I hope you're having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever you're having. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye.